Hello and welcome to this short series covering how to create a pushable block. Now pushable blocks have a variety of different factors to consider. We're going to go through those factors and talk about the way we're going to set up our pushable block. And in this first episode we're going to set up the block to be pushed around and that's it. Okay, so we're going to make it be able to push a single space forwards. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started with our pushable block, there's a few things that we've decided upon. And that's the design of the pushable block. So what reason, what can it do? What can't it do, essentially? So we're going to start off by creating the block actor itself. So you can see what I mean by this. Um, so we bring in an actor here. And we'll quit on a pushable object. And in this pushable object, we're just going to give it a, uh, a cube object here. And I'll make it fairly big. I'll make it twice the size. We'll do two by two by two. And I'm just going to compile that and rise that off the ground, actually, as well. Part of that, there you go. So what I mean by rules is uh, we need to decide upon the following factors whenever you come up with the system. And it's very important because depending on what your rules are, what you do to make this work is going to be very different. Uh, so we'll go through the different options you've got to consider and we'll go through what I am going to be doing over the course of these videos. So when you come across to a block, let's imagine the player start is us. When we go to push the block, can we only push it or can we push and pull it? So if I'm pushing it this way, that's fine. But can I push it? Can I pull it to the left and pull it to the right and also pull it back? That's important to know. Um, for purpose of this, we're going to make it so you can only push to uh, the way you're going. You can only push the block, you can't pull it. So that's what we'll be focusing on there. Uh, the next rule is when you push it, is it free form pushing or is it grid based? So what I mean by grid based is that uh, if I change this stat here to 100, if I was to push it, it would go at 100 at a time as I'm pushing it. So if I was to let go halfway between two points, it would carry on going until it reached the next point. I'm going to be doing that method. It's the most common method you see in lots of games because it makes it easier for the player to line up objects that they're pushing around. So it just makes sense. Um, and the other condition you have to think about as well is whether or not there is a limit to how far you can push to your block. Do you want this block to be limited by uh, an area, by a spline, by like, how like how far it can go? Um, if do you want it to be just free form, you can drag it anywhere you want, or push it anywhere you like inside the area. Totally up to you how you want to handle that. That one in particular, we could probably tweak as we can later on. But right now, we're going to make it so you can push it wherever you want, as long as you're able to. So with our block here, we are going to I'm just going to snap it here to a good space, like so. Um, I'm going to make it so I can push it a hundred units at a time so go to each grid space basically to line it up now for the purpose of this i've also brought in some animations you don't have to worry about this if you haven't got animations you can do it without animations but obviously it looks better if you do um so i've got the heavy push heavy idle loop and start um so uh we've got those in there as so so um, to make this work, we need to know when the player is A, next to the block, and B, is trying to attempt to push the block. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, hit event. When we hit the block, i.e. we walk into it, we can know which way we're facing. So we're going to go to edit push, pushable block here, and we're going to do a hit event. And on the hit event, we can return from here the direction our player is facing. So if I drag out there and do print string, I can get the other actor here and I can get their forward vector. So this will tell me which way my player was facing. So let's go up to here when I hit it. So bam, I was hitting roughly one in X, go this way, roughly one in Y, roughly minus one in y and roughly well and minus one in x there so as you can see the numbers there aren't exactly what we want it to be we need to make them cardinal in other words you can only move up down left and right north south east or west with the block 
So that's important to note because we want to make sure we're rounding that up there. We don't want to take into account of things like this when I'm, I'm skimming it along. Uh, we don't want to take notes of that. We just want to make it so that when we hit the block, we are getting a number that's close to one, in at least one of those areas. So if I go to the block now and take this actor forward vector, I need to know and round this up to one, essentially, uh, if it's close enough to one. So let's take this and we are going to break it open to get the X, Y, and the Z. And I'm going to round these values up or down based upon what they are. So if they're 0.5 or higher, it becomes one. If, 0 .5 or, if it's lower than 0 0.5, it goes to zero. Okay. You can either do that or you can um, say um, nearly equal to, and you can do it this way around if you want, uh, but it's easier in this case to do rounding. Okay, so we're going to do rounding for each one of these axes. And I'm going to make another vector with this. So let's plug that in there. There, there. And for testing purposes, I'm going to print string this new value. This will give us the more cardinal direction, hopefully, that we're moving in. So we go one, you see it's rounded one there to on the x to one and zero zero to the other two. If I go to this side, minus one, go to this side, one and go to this side, minus one. Now, the thing that this doesn't work on is if I'm walking backwards into it. So this is not a problem with my character like this because they are rotating based upon which way they're moving. But if you've got a strafing sort of mechanic in your game where you can walk backwards, um, you don't want it to be doing this uh, backwards. So we only want to be pushing if our forward vector, if we if do a line trace from our character, is hitting the block. Okay, so we don't want to be walking backwards into it because the hit will still register if you walk backwards into it. Um, so we just need to do a line trace out to make sure we can push it. Okay, so before we do that though, let's just store this vector here as the pushable direction. So we'll promote that to a variable and we'll do pushable direction. And we'll put that in like so. So let's now work out if we can push. So we go to functions here and do can push. And this is going to do a line trace. Um, we can do two line traces actually. In fact, we're going to do a line trace for the player, make sure that they are actually facing the block. And also we're going to do another line trace to see if the block is getting is being blocked by another object. But let's first of all just make our character one. So we're going to do a line trace by channel. Oh, not multi. Let's do it again. Line trace by channel. And plug that in. The start position it will be our get player character. And we want to get their actor location. So get actor location. And we're going to plug that into the start there. Next, we want to get their forward vector. So get forward. And we'll do actor forward vector. And we're going to multiply this by a certain distance. Um, and we'll do uh, convert that to a float. We'll do a fairly short one. We'll do like a hundred, but you can tweak that if you wish. And we're just going to add that together to start position there. So we can do that into the end there. Okay, so that's going to do a line trace out for the player. And if this is true, I want to check that it's hitting this. Okay, so let's do this into a branch. And we'll make sure the player value here, hit result is hitting us. Okay, so the hit of actor, we'll make sure it's equal to the displaceable block, so self. And we're just going to hide the rest of this. We don't need all of it. We just want to do this and put that into that check there, into a branch there. 
Now, before we carry on, it's a good idea to go back to this and turn off Ignore Self. We want the line trace to trigger with this object in mind in particular. So we want to turn that off for that. Um, excellent. OK, so that's that. Um, we also, oh, sorry, an actor to ignore. We want to make an array for this and we want to plug the player character into that array there. OK, that's it. Right, so that's going to do the first trace to make sure that we can actually push. OK, so let's just do a return node for now and we'll come back to this later on when we add more conditions for this to push. So if it's true, we're going to add an output saying can push to be true. Okay. Um, and if it's false, we'll turn that off there and turn it off here. Okay, so either way, it's returning true or false. So back in my event graph, event here, we are now going to start pushing our character against this block. Now to do that, we need to basically attach our character to the block and do a lot of other settings to it as well. So the thing I'm going to do here, first of all, is um, do the can push function in, and we'll put that into a branch, like so. And if it's true, this is when we do all of our stuff to attach the player. So first of all, we want to get the player character that's attached to this. So get player character. And we want to first of all, before we actually do any of that, let's go back to the hit here. Just make sure that the other actor is actually the player character. So just do equals to other and put that into a branch. You don't want to be like throwing stones at it and making it make us go into pushing mode. The only way to do it if it's the player character bumping into it. Anyway, so back on here, I'm on can push, on true here. So we're going to do get player character. So the first thing we're going to do with the player character is we are going to tell them to disable movement. Okay, so we're going to do disable movement. So we can no longer move. We then want to attach our character to this actor. So attach actor to actor. And this is the target actor. The parent actor will be self. So it attaches it to the block. And the location rule, rotation rule, and scale rule will keep that as keep world, keep world, keep world. Okay. So let's go into snap our character to the block when we bump into it. So let's test that out and make sure that is working as intended. So push, and I can no longer move at all. Okay, I'm locked to it. Okay, excellent. That's what we want. So next thing I want to do is I need to make it so it can start pushing. Now, to be able to order for it to do that, I need to uh, make a func uh, not function, an event in here, custom event called push. And push is going to be basically a timeline. So I'm going to do timeline and go move block, we'll call it. And it's going to call, call from play from start. And the reason why we play from start is because later on we'll make it push over and over again like a loop effect. And we want to make sure it starts from the beginning of this motion each time. So when we do this, we're going to go into here, add a track. It's a float track. And we'll go position. That's the name. And I add two keys to this. And I'm going to add one key at zero, zero position. And the other key at one, one position. Now, the reason why this is a good number to pick is because this is what we call normalized. Meaning that I can easily scale this any way I want. Either slow it down, speed it up, uh, change how far it goes, all quite easily because it's just a value of one. So I can make heavier objects, for example, take longer to push. Yeah. So I can do some interesting things with this. So with that done, we're going to go back to our event graph and we should now see position as a pin on our timeline. So when I'm doing this, I now want to actually move my object about. So we're going to do set actor relative location and we're going to move this actor's relative location based upon their current position and adding on a new position so we're going to do first of all before we start pushing is get hold of a snapshot of our current location 
So right click, get actor location and promote that to a variable. And we'll do uh, current location, we'll call it. So we've got a snapshot of where they were basically at start. And then the finished position, uh, sorry, the, the position pin here, we're going to multiply this by a vector. So we'll just plug that into there. No, do it this way around. No, okay, we're just going to convert it. Uh, convert to vector. There we are. Okay, and the vector we want to multiply here is going to be um, the pushable direction in there. And then at another pin, this would be how far you want it to go. So this is the travel distance. So I'm going to promote that to a variable and call this one travel distance. And we'll set this default here to 100. Now this is just giving us the new offset. We need to add this onto our current location that we just stored. So get current location and add these two together. Let's just reorganize that, make it look a little bit better, like so. Okay, so push goes into their move block and it updates at the location there. So let's go to compile and, uh, oh, sorry, and actually call push up over here to test this out. And we should now see this thing push one unit along. And there we go, we've now got our block pushable and we've defined what we're going to be doing with our block. In the next episode, we're going to go through the process of, of creating it to stop pushing. And so we can stop pushing it around and step away from it. And also make it so we can keep pushing it. So you can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Make sure you subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.